like to compare Dr. X. T. Sangalia to the Pichu tree land. Now, Pichu is called the master of all glands, and Dr. Chandalia is the master of all glandular diseases. So, uh, it's a great privilege to have him with us here today. And uh, he's one person where I can truly say that needs no introduction, and therefore I will not introduce him. So, uh, <coughs> let me begin, if you don't mind. Uh, we are discussing thyroid disorders, obesity and diabetes today and uh, we have exactly 45 minutes from now, 15 minutes from now to that. Uh, hypothyroidism is the commonest uh, non-diabetic endocrine disorder that most of family physicians see and the uh, treatment of a person who comes with a TSH of more than 15 with typical symptoms is fairly straightforward to you. But the problem comes when a patient's TSH done on a routine examination is between 5 and 10 or 5 and 15 and uh, normal T3, T4, which is sometimes called subclinical hypothyroidism. How do we deal with subclinical hypothyroidism and when do we start treatment? When we face a situation where T3, T4 is normal and uh, TSH is less than 15, you ask yourselves two or three important questions. One, is the patient symptomatic? If you can elicit symptoms like cold intolerance, weight gain, edema, then you should treat. Secondly, you order a test for thyroid antibodies. If antibodies are positive, you should treat because it's an active disease A patient will evolve into established hypothyroidism sometime or other and you don't want to be caught unawares that it goes into severe hypothyroidism. So antibody positivity you treat. And third, if there is a goiter to treat, because TSH, high TSH is a drive to increase the size of the gland. So as soon as you exhibit thyroxine replacement, the gland size shrinks. So that is quite beneficial to the patient. So these are three situations where you treat. Otherwise, with an observer patient can periodically repeat the thyroid function test. Would a very strong family history of hypothyroidism in some other female member become an incentive to treat if all these three situations are absent and only the TSH is 10? Yeah, I think that situation also probably will be attended by autoimmunity only. So okay. probably so antibodies should be positive. Yeah. Can can we have negative antibodies in a patient who is going to become hypothyroid? You can. The antibody that we estimate are we call it anti thyroglobulin anti-microsomal or they are also called anti-TPO antibody, the same as anti-microsomal. But remember that hypothyroidism is caused by some other antibody actually. These are called TSH receptor blocking antibodies, which are not really estimated. So only thing is that these other antibodies that we estimate to give you a clue that there is a possibility of autoimmune disease and you go by that because you don't estimate the anti-TSH receptor of antibody. So I think it is a possibility, yes. Okay. For the family physician, when he writes the test, should he write anti-thyroid antibodies because there are two varieties in the lab or should he write one like anti-TPO antibody which becomes cheaper and whether it is enough? Usually the anti-TPO antibody has higher prevalence of positivity than the other one, anti thyroid So if you wish to order only one antibody, it should be anti-TPO antibody. Well, it's so the same as anti-microsomal, yes. The approximate cost as I know is about 900 rupees per antibody, so don't that or more? No, not really. I think uh, some of the organizations in the city have revolutionized the cost structure of carbon assays. And I must say they are doing very well. I don't think that's in the wrong way. So they do something like 10, 20,000 essays a day and they offer some of these for a few of them. Okay. Yes, yes, you can do that. In fact, I will be they will do something like 7 or 8 thyroid tests. Oh. Whether you need it or not. <laughs> okay. Uh, how do we guard against missing hypothyroidism in the elderly? Because elderly patients uh, sometimes present differently or they can. I think uh, the diagnosis of hypothyroidism nowadays is being made quite early. And this is due to the, you know, the changing trends and the family physicians, they have learned it quite well now. 
um, because for I think last about 20 years, I have not seen any severe hypothyroid for what we used to say, basically a coma. So I never been able to show my students any basically a coma for the last about two decades because the diagnosis is early. The way to do it is, of course, the first is introducing ESF estimation as a routine assay. And as a matter of fact, we're trying to advise many advanced facilities to make it a part of SMA. You know, simultaneous multiple analysis, they do 10, 20, 30 tests. TSS should be part of that. That might be one excellent way of diagnosing early. So I think that is one. And secondly, of course, as usual, keep your index of suspicion very high. If you really, you know, keep this always in mind, you will not miss because the manifestations, you know, can be so different, you know. Slightly large, slightly edema, reasonably hypertension, to mild skin changes, to cold intolerance, to mild anemia. You see, so you know, uh, you have to keep your index of suspicion very high in the elderly people. I think elderly people and children, hypothyroidism can be risky. <laughs> children also it presents very differently. They continue to appear bright because they are so bright that it does not you know, die down with my hypothyroidism. And uh, you know, they continue, uh, growth rate is slightly affected. But you know, they don't get edema, the impact appears to be more muscular like pseudo hypertrophy. So it's a little different at different ages. So you have to be very careful about that. One important message here to especially Santa Cruz Association is none of the health uh, uh, diagnostic centers in our area, EHM and Moderna, do PSH as a part of the health checkup plan for males. In, in female checkup plans, there are some plans which include TSH. So whenever you order a complete health checkup plan, if you do, please add TSH even if the patient is a male. That is. Uh, so how do we start thyroxin? We say that we should start on a lower dose and go slowly in the elderly. What do we do in the young? What do we do differently in the older person? The simple principle is that the more severe the hypothyroidism, slower you go. The more severe? Yes. If you find that TSH is very high, T3, T4 is very low, go at the slowest speed possible. Start with something like 35 microgram, and escalate every 4 to 7 days until you come to the right dose. The reason? The reason is that these are the people who will not tolerate sudden bursts of hypermetabolic activity. For example, the elderly person will get cardiac acceleration, they sometimes I have seen a myocardial infarct getting precipitated. Fortunately, not in my patient. So, they are just doing it and then, of course, calling me for consultation, how this happened. You, know. you see, so this sudden escalation is bad in these people. On the other hand, the situation like what we discussed earlier, like, you see, subclinical hypothyroidism, you can say start with the fructose. With the patient, TT, T4 is normal. It's a slight elevation of the ascent. It's a very mild situation. And therefore, you can start straight with what you might consider the near final dose. The only exception to this rule is if somebody is close to basically a coma, then although the thyroid hormone levels are perilously low, you are going to treat very, very aggressively because there is a question of life and death. But as I told you, we have not seen one for years now, so we are not going to face this situation. Uh, what do you say is, as, as I understand here, if the patient's TSH is 15, patient's T3, T4 are normal, and antithyroid tests are positive, if the patient is young, you can start with full dose. Now, the question will be, what is the full dose? Is it the NG-per kg, or as we sometimes start straight away with 100 micrograms? Is that correct, or should we go by a microgram per kg? But the good guess is, in the literature, the dose that ultimately we arrive at is close to about 1.6 microgram per kg in adults. We analyze a thousand patients of ours where we have very painstakingly arrived at the nice, with the proper dose. You know, it's a meticulously done, uh, you know, titration. And there we found it an average of 1.8 microgram per kg. So, yeah. So if you wish to guess, I think this might be one way to guess around. Maybe you go very close to that, slightly lower than that, and then tighten it up. That might be a good idea. You cut short the time interval that you desire for the right dose. So 1.8 microgram per kg in a 60 kg person would translate into about approximately 100 micrograms. So that is possibly the one, those that you straight away start with in a young patient. 